That's right, it's time. Um, and today we're gonna start with a video from 2016. Um, there's a video I talked about a while where Chris kind of points out that it's uh Star Citizen's not happening how we said it was gonna happen, and he said it all the way back then, and people still and and even they still kind of uh tout the old I guess, ways of, of how they plan on making the game. But this is um, Chris Roberts' interview for GameStar at Gamescom 2016. Oh my God, the fake, the news thing. Chris Roberts, we've just seen the latest demo of Star Citizen here at Gamescom 2016, but I remember we go. This was right after Gamescom 2016 demo, which was the most hyped I've ever been. I was cheering in the crowd like a little fucking schoolgirl. And it, it was it was crazy. So, like, there's never been a time where we were more excited for this game. And then uh, that's when everything fell apart. Like, this was the kind of moment that everything fell apart and why we're still stuck in the rut that we are in today, waiting for server meshing. Back a long way, right? <laughs> we definitely do. I remember coming out to Munich and showing you uh, in 2012, before we did the full uh, Kickstarter announcement, well, not Kickstarter, actually, our crowdfunding, and then later on Kickstarter announcement. Um, so yeah, you were one of the very few people that got to see it before I announced it at GDC in I moved Austin. myself to the uh, left. I thought it was pretty cool what I was showing you back then. I think you did too. Uh, but yeah, now it, every year it sort of gets much bigger and more, you know, more polished and more ambitious and shows more of what, um, you know. The That's funny. Every year it does get more ambitious. <laughs> the original idea. But less polished. Indeed, it's yeah, it's grown quite a bit, I'd say. But before we go into into the specifics, let me just ask a random question: What's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, I don't have a favorite Pokemon. I'm not a Pokemon player. So. Oh wow! <laughs> All right, I'm, only, I'm probably one of the only people that's not playing Pokemon Go. So. Indeed. That's how old um, this is. Pokemon back Go to Star is a You just showed us a demo of the procedurally generated planets where you could land. I think we should all ask for a refund now because this guy doesn't uh, doesn't even have a favorite Pokemon. Can't even answer the question. Can't even, you can't even say like Pikachu or something. Your spaceship seamlessly fly from Charizard, orbit to the easy. to planet surface. Actually, I can't even remember if that was planned from the beginning of Star uh, Citizen. No, so no, definitely wasn't planned from the beginning. So originally, when I was studying it, I didn't think I'd have the resources or the tech to be able to do that. So we were thinking you got close to a planet. And then you would ask for landing permission and then it would play a or like a cutscene. At this point, like what they mean by resources is is like time. Like and 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 what time means is that people continue to buy spaceships and give him more time to continue. Right? Of you landing down and we would like stream in the the, the background. Uh, landing location and then you would you know would cut to you landing down and then you would get out and you walk around in first person uh, so this is purely the result of the you know much larger support uh, that we've got which thank you very much that's awesome uh, that nope. we were able to um, invest much more money in the vehicle coming really out of the vehicle to work all on that the tech. stuff so, you know, wild. we have a pretty decent sized German office now about 50 people in Frankfurt uh, and, you know, a lot of those actually are some of the original Crytek uh, engineers that built the CryEngine in the first place. And they're, you know, a big part of why they, all this procedural and scale works. So once we had that on board, yeah, if I'm going to do it, I've always wanted to be able to go anywhere, land on any, you know, see the planet, it's a little dart, and fly there and get down and land on it and walk around, but have it all be the detail where I can see my hands and pick Look up objects and, you know, super high fidelity um so it's great i mean that's that's uh, but it wasn't but in the this original was monumental. Uh, campaign so i i know that there is you know there's a small number of people that were like i wish i had you know i want the original game that was promised but the original games are much 
smaller game than what we're building now. And yes, it's taking a bit longer now, but I think what we're building now, we're building something to last for 10 years after it's, you know, at least 10 years plus, right? So after it's done, we call it whatever, the commercial version 1.0 or whatever, it's going to be something that year after year, we're adding content, adding gameplay features, improving the graphics. And it goes on the same way that EVE Online's gone on for 10 plus years, or the Warcraft's gone on for 10 plus years. That's our goal. So to build something that has that longevity, you got to build it right. And you want to, and I, and I want to make sure it has the features that'll do it. So we, we, we're focusing a lot more on the sort of multiplayer aspects, right? Which is, you know, something I think especially for online gaming is really important the social aspect playing with your friends doing stuff together adventuring together there is okay so we got to build it right is that not sort of what they're doing still like they're not really um doing too many we're, we're literally asking them to do uh Hey man, just do like little stupid workarounds for right now. And and like with soft death and some other things, they are starting to do that. But is that kind of like sort of what they're doing? They they don't seem to be making any exceptions but move towards server meshing and that's it. No, I think they're trying to build it. Like come on. Like be be reasonable, chat. You you guys are sometimes just here to to be completely like just dumping on them. But it's something that they've always been working towards one step at a time. They're just like, it's one step forward, two steps back, you know, one step forward, three steps back. A lot of, a lot of times when it comes to this tech to try to deliver the, the multiplayer experience that they want to do. Right. But it, it still, this is one thing where it's like he said in 2016, when they basically unveiled that they're changing everything. That. We're going to build it and we're going to build it right. But none of us at that moment expected it to be. Think, think about this right now. This was six years ago. Six years ago, they debuted Procedural Planets. Right? And then it's, it's, the, it's the timeline. It's the, we want to build it right. This is how we're going to do it. They do it and it's not good enough and then they go back to the drawing board and do it again you know and it's just like oh man it's tough it's tough as a backer to be a part of this process like really tough there is some pvp obviously but i think just the doing things with your friends is probably one of the big drivers of online gaming and i certainly like it it's kind of cool and that was part of the demo we showed you know Two, you know, multi-crew, two guys taking a freelancer and going off and doing missions and adventuring together. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot more uh, in the game uh, now and what we're building than what we'd originally thought, but it's the game I've always wanted to have. I dreamed about, I didn't think I could have the, I could afford to do it. So we can now, uh, and we can do it technically. So, uh, so much not? motion it's, blur uh, too. Like you've told me, it's crazy, but. <laughs> It's good to be crazy sometimes. <laughs> and you guys are definitely crazy. Actually, building things in like the procedurally generated planets, like an AI that can handle zero G combat, which is something we've seen in the demo, makes doesn't it doesn't this make the, the project more and more and more complicated? Has there ever been a moment when you thought, oh my god, we should have built a small game and added in these things afterwards with a patch or an add-on, an update, whatever? And this is kind of like, we should have, I still think that they should have probably made the original scope of the game. And then if you wanted to build it out better, go for that. But I, I was, I was always very pleased with what the original scope of the game was. And the chest made it small, get it launched. Uh, so it does, it does make it more complicated. Definitely. I mean, that's one of the reasons why it's taken as long and requires, I and mean, we have 330 people uh, working on it now, four studios around the world. Uh, but no, there hasn't been a point where I've said... Bro, they always talk about how many people they have. But... Not, we're in the same... We're almost in literally the same boat now that we were then. It's but kind I of funny. I wish I'd released something simpler. Because, uh, I, I mean, I, just, I honestly feel like... It's just it's a, it's a different approach because... Triple the know, people. Uh, and both a viable approaches. One is 
do something more limited and then add on extra functionality, which is uh, you know, more the way that elites went about its stuff. And then uh, there's the approach we're taking, which is like, okay, this is what we want to make and it's this huge thing. And that's what we're doing from the beginning. And we kind of took the approach for this because some of the scale that we want to do, especially with the first person of fidelity and the size of the universe with the detail we want, requires the foundation to be correct. So it's very hard when you build a system to do something more limited and then you, and then you want to change it to do something that's a lot more detailed and complicated. And so we've that's what our time's been taken is doing a lot of engineering on the base level, re-engineering CryEngine uh, to you know 64 bit precision to have the zones, the local the local uh, physics uh, stuff that we showed. Uh, we have in what I was showing you all these what we call object containers, which are containers of these objects and entities that are nested. And so um, that's how we don't have any loading screens. But as we approach a planet, it's bringing in. Like, it's kind of funny. He, I mean, they've been saying the same things forever. It's all part of the plan. It's just the plan. The planned timeline is the thing that has failed miserably. The, the area that we're approaching and creating it before we get there. And then it's sort of there when we leave it. When it goes off in the distance, it's gone. Because we'll never be able to fit the whole star system in that detail in memory at once on anyone's PC. So everyone's PC sort of has their... And like, view of their whether the plan is good or smart or the way to do things is not up for me to say. Um, oh, oh, I can only speak to it's been a really trying six years from this moment where I've never felt so excited in my entire life. I was like, you know, I was there first off and it was just so such a crazy experience. And then on top of that, like one of the most hype demos they ever had. And from you know, I went from here to where we are today through the last six years of just absolutely being put through the ringer and just, you know, it is so painful, uh, basically what they've done to us with the the idea of this is what we're doing and not really delivering. And then the server has uh, more of it, but the server doesn't have to have the rendering graphics and it doesn't have to have the sound and the textures so it just needs to know the physical world and the rules of the world and we control the memory on the server uh, but yeah it just uh, I think you have to build it that way from the beginning to do this otherwise it's more painful to get there so uh, you know it's unfortunate it's unfortunate that I can't give you what I the, the dream game in two or three years uh, but I think ultimately at the end of the day especially when you're building something that's going to last for hopefully 10 plus years it's worth it doing it right I mean I just I just sort of feel like at the end of the day I see it all the time with games is everyone complains if a game gets delayed you know I remember you got to ask yourself though is this game going to last 10 plus years you know for what we know about it that's I, I think there still remains a lot to be seen like I mean from the moment it releases not even from right now Hasn't already? No, of course not. Right? Like a, a flourishing player base from... Like, there is not a very strong player. I don't care what they say, how many people are playing. That's not really a strong player base. Because um, they've never really shared, like, concurrent numbers. And, it, like, if we look at Steam numbers, whatever, you know, it's not... They're not really comparing to... to you know, some of the better games or whatever, because it's not really a game yet. So once it's released, like, I don't care about the concurrent player numbers right now. None of that matters. It It is, uh, it does show that play people care, um, that, that people are starting to enjoy the game more. It shows a trend. Um, but for me, it's more of when the game launches, is it going to be able to have like a flourishing, strong community for 10 plus years? And they have, for me personally, they have yet to show that they are delivering any single gameplay element that can hold anybody's attention for that long. Um, especially with what we know about the economy and how we may not be that huge of a part of it and we're just kind of living in it. That could get really boring. You know, I'm I'm of the wait and let's see how this is going to go kind of uh, person for this right now. But... Yeah, it's an interesting question. From release, 
You know, do we think that this thing's going to last? I, I don't know. They're going to have to keep up with modern graphics engines and, and uh, other games. And I think they took really way too long to develop. And if they delivered this three years or, you know, let's say they delivered Star Citizen two years ago, you know, we'd be two years into playing it. I think you can probably get eight more years out of it if they delivered like a fun or truly fun experience. Remember Uncharted 4, but everyone was complaining it got delayed out of from, the year. And from like five years from everything. now? And then it came out and it was a great game and no one was complaining. And I think the thing that people complain the most is if you give them something that doesn't have, isn't full featured or is compromised a little bit or is not as polished or buggy, uh, people would complain a lot more then than they would about it being a bit later so that's bro we that's need what to I'm listen to that again because this guy does not pay attention to his own fucking words and i think the thing that people complain the most is if you give them something that doesn't have isn't full featured or is compromised a little bit or is not as polished or buggy uh people would complain a lot more then than they would about it being a bit later so two years later at citizen con 2018 he basically says that star citizens released Right. What is release anyway, huh? What is release? <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's one that you know, you, you eat your words there. Oh, that's that's what I'm doing. I mean, look, no one wants to play this game sooner than me, uh, and it'd be nice to get it done. I get a damn my holiday, proper holiday once, and not have to worry about anything for a while. But, uh, you know, I've got this picture of this game in my head, and I think the experience is going to be amazing at that level of detail, doing stuff with your friends, going around the world, meeting new people. Um, so I want to make it happen, but I want to make it happen right. And mentioning all this re-engineering you had to do with the CryEngine, are you still happy with having picked this engine specifically? I mean, you had to rewrite the AI system, you had to, well, as I said before, yeah, the procedure. We haven't finished rewriting the AI system and all the still other stuff, so we still have a lot more work to do. <laughs> okay. but, um, but no, I mean, the, the issue is that it doesn't matter whether it was Unreal 4 or CryEngine, none of the engines out there do what we need to do because no one, no one makes a game that has that level of scale. So for a start, Unreal 4 is in 32-bit precision, CryEngine base is in 32-bit, we moved it to 64-bit. So we, what we did on this, we would still have to do on if we were on a different engine so we're perfectly happy with cry engine it's not i don't think it's it's just no one's built you know unreal's not built to scale as a massive mmo either right so uh and we've got you know some of the guys that built cry engine in the first place so they're the best people so i think for us it's the it's from 2016 the best choice. And, you know they're the guys that have done the procedural planet tech uh, and uh, you know they've helped with we've been refactoring the engine to scale because don't forget they also built the engine originally a long time ago and back then you know the computers were much simpler now they're much more powerful they have many more CPUs and cores so one of the other things we're doing is we're doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff to move it to uh, what we call a sort of a job system that distributes all the different tasks between the different cores on a computer so if you have a multi-core computer with they just finished that right that's the gen 12 renderer work which is kind of crazy that like just finished six years later six cores or eight cores then a lot of this so you'll you'll just get you know better frame rate and stuff because a lot of the stuff's distributed to different cores and so the main and that is and that is the thing about this guy it's like yeah we're working on that right now so like any normal brained human being would be like okay we're you know it's gonna be a little while two years max right for like a feature two years max when when they're talking about like actively working on it now you you like you just assume those things why wouldn't you? And uh, the original CryEngine or the original Unreal isn't really structured to do that. And back then, the way they talked, I would have thought that shit would be done in, in two weeks. All right, some guy sits down, crunches some numbers, bang, it's good, you know? Because they, they were building it for a different time. 
Um, so yeah, I didn't no, understand I'm, I'm anything back with then the, with the engine. It's just we'd have this much work whatever way we went. Now, as you said before, sometimes things take longer. But you have 1.4 million backers who are longing to play this game and to uh, to see that dream come true. Um, I remember us sitting together a year ago when you said, well, the Star Marine module is only a few weeks away. <laughs> it's not released yet, I guess. Yeah, so are you now <laughs> Based. done giving dates? And what can you say to those people who say, well, we want this to be finished right now? Well, that's, I, I don't, yeah. It came out in a few months from this interview. I don't want to give dates because the more important thing is to make it right. What we will talk about is the sequence. So right now uh, we've got 2.5 uh, in the what we call our sort of PTU, which is sort of early test before we go live to all the backers, which is still alpha and kind of test. Um, but hopefully we'll get 2.5 out by the end of this week. If not, it'll be the beginning of next week. And then the next uh, release is going to be the Star Marine uh, for real. For real <laughs> Star Marine this time. Uh, but we've done a lot, a lot of work to re-engineer everything and make it uh, feel good. Um, and that's what we're calling the 2.6 patch. So it's going to have Star Marine, which I think will be uh, quite good just by itself as an FPS uh, shooting experience. And then we're also going to spend a bit of time on Arena Commander uh, sort of bringing its polish level up. Because it hasn't really been tended for a while because everyone's been focusing on sort of the mini Oof. You. Yeah. And then the, the end of the year release that's still is not a to thing. be the well, 3.0 release, thing. which is the one that's the first one that has the planets in. It will also have uh, item 2.0 in, which is sort of the interaction stuff. It's going to have some of our new network code and improvements They didn't even in. know about Theaters uh, of War so back a, then. It's got, a, it's, going to have, it's got a few other things that will be in it as well, uh, some of which we're going to talk and show at CitizenCon. So it's a really big patch, and it's going to obviously have some professions. I, I talked about when we were showing it in terms of you know, being able to be a, a cargo hauler or you know, trade stuff or be a mercenary or a bounty hunter or a pirate. So the, those, you know, the base level of those professions will then get supported, which is more than we have right now in the current alpha release. I mean, right now in the alpha release, you can go out and you can get some missions to turn the security off or on. And I remember how or, cool this uh, was back then. Or if level five, you get paid to kill them and you can kind of do stuff and it's a bit free form and sandboxy, uh, but there'll be much more of a sort of trading and economy and missions and more stuff to do in the end of the year release and that'll be the foundation that will carry on adding more you know uh, sophistication in the profession implementation and more of them and more of the gameplay mechanics while fleshing out the content so i think for the, the end of the year um, release for us is a really big one on star citizen so it's very foundational we'll also have the first iteration of our uh, kind of new mission system uh, which is fits in with our ai which we call subsumption so all those it's rolling out so many things. Um, it's a lot. Hopefully, they'll all make it. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a lot. Of, we have a lot of work. So for um, uh, on the Star Citizen front. But asking you uh, for a date uh, about a date for the beta would be a little too soon, right? Yes. Yeah. No. I. 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 I, I like it. I am just. You know. I'll say. You know, <laughs> we'll get two six. We'll get three zero out, and uh, you know, next year we'll be pushing it along. I mean, the idea is that it was three zero as the first. Uh, beginning of the Stanton system, we've got it kind of blocked out, and then we'll be iterating, probably fleshing out some of the locations because the first iteration we won't be able to get all the locations out at the level of detail that we like, and then f fleshing out secondary locations, making it so it's a really textured, beautiful system with a lot to go on in the professions, and then when we feel like we've got all those all those bits in place in the world. With a lot to go on in the professions, and they literally worked on mining for five years straight, that's it. Workflow's good, they won't start now. Suddenly there'll be you know, other star systems that will come online and you'll be able to jump to them. And, uh, that's, and then at some point, um, we'll just kind of say, all right, we're, this is beta and we're not gonna wipe the persistent database anymore. Because we have a persistent database, but right now we wipe it between releases because if there's someone that cheated or you know, or there was an exploit they could do to win, win, earn lots of money, then... Uh yeah, that's why we wiped it. Not because our persistence database was a total piece of crap. Uh, you know, that allows us to wipe it. But at some point, we're just going to say, no, we're not going to be wiping it. And, and what people are earning, they're earning. And that's be pretty close to when we'll be saying, okay, we're uh, final release. Because what, what we consider the final release is not going to have 
every single one of our stretch goals because there's a, there's a million of them and uh, yeah we'll definitely do them but they're you know for me the core release is the core star citizen experience doing the different professions being able to play oh, the this different is kinds so of epic, stuff this moment we want, traveling between star systems and that's what i would call sort of star citizen 1.0 and then you know pets or something would be you know something that would come online a few months afterwards or something like that did you say pets literally 100,000 of people waiting for specific different aspects of the game be it a single ship be it a system to be included in the game how do you manage their expectations how do you decide what to do next for example he uh, manages the uncle of a colleague who we didn't even know was a gamer even my colleague didn't know he was a gamer but he actually backed star citizen asks what was the plan for the hull class of ships you know the freight freighter class of ships so first question how do you balance the expectations and then what are the plans the next plans for the hull class uh what well, i mean it it's it's difficult because you know everyone has different you know like so like in the case you're talking about i'm pretty sure that person likes to they want to be a, a trader or a cargo hauler right so they 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 want to have but someone else will be like i want to be a mercenary so i want a combat ship uh so but what we kind of focus on is the plan that we have and then we try our best to communicate like what we're up to we're showing we've changed the format of our um, uh, communication and our video shows to be much more show instead of just talk about it uh, so now we're, we're getting there in front of the devs and showing features they're working on uh, and I think that's helping out a lot because we sort of looked at it and said you know what uh, doing this everyone's working on amazing stuff and doing but doing this right is going to take some time so we really should show everyone that's back in the game you know how much how hard everyone's working and all the cool stuff they're working on and how excited they are by it so you can understand so you don't sort of just hear people oh we're working on this system we're working on this system oh no we're, we've now shifted around to show much more of that so i think the communications and you know what's funny is that created even i think possibly even more unrealistic expectations because Let's see, like Banu Merchantman. Hey, we started showing the Banu Merchantman, but the Banu Merchantman never had a timeline of when it was going to release. And if something happened catastrophic like it did, it's not going to release at all. And then they showed that thing, and then you have the expectation that, oh my God, they're actually working on it. Right? Um, yeah. It's important. Uh, so people understand that like this stuff takes work and you've got to craft it well to make it work and then we have a certain order we need because it sort of works for what we need for so technology it's weird. it works but it, it definitely has its production. flaws so even though someone wants a certain thing here um that may not line up to what to what we want so i think oh my god the original takeoff ui about look at this guy consistently sort of updating it so uh we want to do a better job of that that's why we uh. changed around the Uh, sort of around the verse and the video content and uh at citizen con i want to um sort of un like basically talk about a very high level road plan for everyone in the back of so everyone can know we do this here we do this here so not dates i don't want to do dates because it's really hard well i mean i like i was saying before we started the interview that you know i don't make these dates up i mean people think oh chris doesn't he's what happens is we go we schedule something out we break all the tasks down everyone on the team that's working on that gives their estimates in then on the management production side is oh it's not my fault guys it's not my fault but this is how it's done right he's not he's not lying he's not making this up this is exactly what happens but i think i, I don't know what has gone on dude over the years but the the estimations that these people make are completely brain dead it seems like I don't know what it is. It's not just me. It's like Aaron and then we have a big production team. We add extra time to it. And then we think, okay, definitely it's going to hit then. And, and then invariably it's still past then, right? So we, you know, we thought we would have 2.5 out by the end of July. It's mid-August now. We're hoping to have it out um, by the end of, uh, you know, by this Friday. But it may be even next week. But that's because there's sometimes bugs you find that no one knows how to find it. And we're multiplayer and there's some bugs that we find that don't show up on our QA they don't even show up when 500 people are testing but they show up when 
5,000 people or 10,000 people or 100,000 people are testing. And so there's some stuff that's very unpredictable about that. So that's why I really don't want to, you know, just go ahead and double everyone's estimates. That that's what I kind of am hoping. Like this is just pure like from the copium factory uh that that I've seen people say, but it'd be so funny if it was actually true. If the estimate estimation of when server meshing is going to release is this like really ridiculously long estimate that they made and they're they're actually able to deliver it earlier Don't ever would, give it i think dates. that would be but what hilarious. we think we can do is we can be better at saying okay here's the production pipeline on the ships this is when the whole class is going to be start production this is when the um carrick's going to start production this is when the endeavor is going to start production uh okay this is when this profession is going to come online this is when this star system is going to come online or this planet's going to come online so we're going to work at um basically citizen con to oh my share God, sort of more high level roadmap so people that get involved now can kind of have a idea of the general stuff on a very high level that we're working on and i think that will help but yeah communication i think is important um because you know i, I just like communicate it's good so what is the exact date and time of the hull class being included in the game uh i i I can't give you a date on that one, uh, but uh, no, the the hull's actually one of the ships that, um, as soon as the Squadron Forty Two ships are done, which I think is going to which we've been adding to for the last six years, be September, October, maybe November time. Uh, all like so, all our because we have a lot, we have a lot of artists What? working on all the Squadron Forty Two, like all the Vandal ships, all the UE big capital ships, like the Bengal, the Javelin, and the Idris. Uh, and the various other small stuff. They're finished, we'll have a actually quite a large team that rolls off that and now they go back onto the Persistent Universe ship, so like the hull. Didn't like a year later they came out with a video of the new Vandal style? The Carrick, the Endeavor, all those ones. Um, so, and I know that the hull's one of the first ships on the list. So it's likely to start sometime not too long after the uh, Squadron 42 ships have been finished just because we're going to one of the big, you know one of the early professions is going to be cargo trading so you have small ships like we we're showing in the demo the freelancer and we have a slightly bigger one the star sparer that you can do cargo in but really the whole classes are the dedicated haulers and uh, that's going to be one of the you know early professions that you'll be able to do in uh, 3.0 and beyond so so it's a fairly high priority for us all right you made a certain uncle very happy now <laughs> Actually, you just um, yeah, you just answered my next question. Squadron 42 is still on track, then. Uh, we're working hard on that, but I'll, it's gonna you know think think of us being naughty dog. So <laughs> it's gonna be it'll, it'll be it'll be uh, it's gotta be great and it's gotta be polished. So we're definitely um, all the elements uh, will be done this year. So we're kind of in the close down mode of we've got all the the content, the missions, the uh, playthrough are all done and blocked in. We're finishing all the What assets, we've finished joke. all the motion capture. We're working on the characters, as you could even see in the demo. That's that's a background NPC character um, that will be in Squadron 42 that we also apply here. And so the tech, it's all, all, all these things are sort of coming together. So the thing I can't tell you is how long it's going to take to polish and make it all work and make it all be super smooth, because we still have some the AI subsumption stuff, uh, the mission stuff is still first rolling in. So that's a tech dependency and uh, uh, the object container stuff, which we were showing the first bit is all part of the same because we do the same because in Squadron 42 now we're gonna you're gonna go down to, uh, you know, just do like down and planet side uh, infiltration and some other stuff, which we weren't originally going to do. So we sort of upped like And we've added some more stuff to Squadron 42. We made the battle at the end even bigger. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be an, it's going to be absolutely epic. Uh, but like I said, you know, consider us on, on Squadron 42. It we will behave like Naughty Dog, which is like it has to be right, it has to be polished. Uh, so I don't want to make any prediction on that. Uh, but the 
raw content. You can't keep saying you're going to behave like actual game development companies that actually deliver a fucking product. Jesus will be done. Christ. Um, no by, way. Uh, towards the end of this year, and then it's a matter of uh, the polish time. So. But, but, but I see a recurring theme there. That he's not even more. Like. Just please don't take this the wrong way, but just tell me it's going to be done one day. It's definitely going to be done one day. So I, I want, trust me, I want Squadron 42 done uh, and out, and, uh, uh, you know, at least as much as Star Citizen. And Squadron 42 is more contained because Star Citizen's got a lot more functionality. So, but uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be done. All right. It won't, it won't be, it's not going to be forever, trust me. So it will, it will uh, it's either, you know, we're trying to get everything done towards the end of the year. If it's not, it's going to be beginning of next year but that's kind of the that's sort of our plan so we'll kind of update people as we go it's sort of hard because we've still got dependencies on certain elements of the tech and stuff but we're not adding any more uh content or features to it so squadron 42 has been locked for quite a while so the adding of the planet was something that happened didn't happen yesterday trust me and then took the entire dev team five years later before it's done, took the entire dev team working on, on Star Citizen and moved them all over to add features. Happened quite a while ago. Uh, originally, we were going to have a more limited area you came down to, and then we just sort of said so we might as well use the tech for the whole thing. Nebel is now doing the Star Citizen covering for this newspaper. Uh, but uh, it's like it's content and feature locked, and it doesn't have nearly as many of the different features that obviously Star Citizen is going to have. So it's much closer on that. The, the biggest unknowns is the, the, the getting the AI awesome because it's not just the combat stuff. There's the, you know, you, you on your ship that you're based to the Idris and later on, like you move across to another ship, uh, you know, you're with the crew and they're going about their jobs and doing stuff and talking to you. And it all has to be super smooth and natural and, and not like jerky AI or anything like that. So that that all stuff takes some time to really make it because the idea we, we captured everyone at this super high fidelity, all these you know very well known actors, and spent all this time filming it. And the idea is you feel like you're existing in. Like I mean, a to really be clear, cool not adding movie. any more features yeah, is so like from a design standpoint. This is what the game is. This is what it's going to look like. That could be true, but they never had anybody make the features. Would be there, my guess. Like, in it with Mark Hamill and talking to him, or I don't know. With Gary Oldman, I, I don't know, man. They don't feel like we never talk about squadrons, so we don't know anything. And he can so say whatever the, he wants. The AI and the fidelity, the animation, everything to do all that has to be top notch. Uh, and so, like I said, that's the that's the polish level. But uh, it's going to be it's going to be a brilliant experience. I mean, we the script was one thousand two hundred fifty five pages. Uh, significantly going to. I mean. Wing Commander 4 was a 400 page script once it was condensed down to the just a normal page format. So there's just a massive amount of story and content and there's some, I think, uh, hopefully powerful emotional moments in it uh, and some really cool sort of visual, uh, textual moodle moments. Uh, and there, there's a lot of like what we were showing here where there's seamless transition, but it's not, it's not just dogfighting in space. That's just a small part of it. There's dogfighting, there's there's lots of on-ground FPS action, EVA action, uh, exploring, going to different environments. So it's a huge epic adventure, and it's been pretty cool. And um, I remember why this is. I remember why I became so skeptical right now. Just playing the devil's advocate there a bit in the last question. There's been some criticism by some people, some from shady sources. Let's not talk about that. About you spending your money for different things and nobody really knows what for, I don't know. Um, now, there are some Kickstarter projects who kind of put a price tag to anything they do for people to know what their money is being spent on. Have you ever considered doing that for Star Citizen? Uh, no, that's just sounds, that just sounds like a, a nightmare. I mean, I already, I already have, a, I already have you know, a lot of armchair developers and uh, all the rest of the stuff and armchair CEOs. Um, and you know the inputs appreciated and good, but you gotta you gotta run a project, and you you know you can't have a committee of 1.4 million people deciding stuff. I mean, we we put all the money we raise into the game. I mean, we have 330 people around the world. There's four studios. Uh, you know, we do. I mean, hell, we do videos where you walk around the studios. I mean, 330 people. <laughs>
we can't have armchair developers, but the only thing they do is give us a look on inside development. Well, they all need to everything's be around development. What do you think was going to happen? Paid, you know, it's like added it up. It's like it's going, it's going in the game. We're constantly all adding we do is talk about development because that's stuff, all you so, talk about. Uh, it's all the I information think some you people give. People like attention, and so they like to say things. Uh, but uh, yeah, we just we focus on what we're doing. We care about making the best game possible, and every dollar that we raise goes to making the game better. And that's kind of. I really feel like every dollar they raise right now goes to raising the next dollar uh, is sort of or squadron, obviously. Yeah, I think uh, things have definitely shifted in in um, in that way. Unfortunately, the pledge I made, I said that until the game's commercial, where all the money we're raising is essentially going in and getting reinvested into the game. And we sort of determine, uh, you know, how polished and how big and how ambitious and everything is look at how much better that. this and was that hasn't changed i mean it's been the you know we did last year you know better than we did the year before despite apparently having you know some criticisms uh so i, I think the majority of people are, are happy with uh what we're doing because you know they just want I think most people got into this because they wanted something that wasn't going to be, they would play for a week and put away. I think most people got into this to have something that they could play for years. And so they're like, okay, if you're going to build something, build it right, because I want to play this for years. And so I've, for me, that's kind of what I hold true to. Uh, and that's important for me. And because I also want to play this game, I want to be in this universe and I want it to be right. And you could see it when you know we were showing you the demo and I'm calling out to Aaron, this is thing and this and all these little details that, you know, maybe on your side, you're like, oh, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I didn't notice that. But, you know, for me, that's kind of it. It like, has to be this vision. So that's what I'm uh, focusing on. And uh, I think it's the best way. I mean, if, if the focus was like making the best game possible, you would think that there would be... Um, a, maybe a effort and work towards building that experience in the game right now. And the best game possible isn't just looking at pretty things, you know? Way in the communication I talked about sharing what we're doing goes on and then the rest of it's up to the, the people. But I don't really want to get into a situation where I say, do you want this feature for so many dollars or do you want this feature for so many dollars? Because I think at that point, you're going to lose control of uh, a singular vision and building a really cohesive world. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can tell you there's, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing shady with us. We're, we're, we're straight up. The, I think people that say things to that, they, you know, people, was it? Look in a mirror, something like that. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing where the game is going to be in one year. And if the Hulk class has not been released, I'll be bringing a certain uncle and we'll talk some more. <laughs> I actually. Yeah, they talked for five years straight. I think there's a, there, there's a good chance by next year that the could be a whole class because we've got the misc ships we've already got the styles and the basically once we've built one or two of the ships at scale like the starfarer is a big scale misc ship it's much quicker for us to build it than when we first build the first one because there's a whole style of materials and shaders that you build for the different manufacturers so the misc uh so the whole class is uh i think by the next time my next games con will be you know whether it's flying right then, it'll be very close to, so. Wow. Chris, thank you so much. Thank Jesus. you for having me, and I wish you continuing success with Star Citizen. Thanks for having me, and thank you all out there. Anyone that's back Star Citizen, thank you very much. I remember why I came to be what what I am today and why this has been so frustrating. That was that was 2016 in a nutshell, dude. That has that is 2016 in a nutshell. And that wasn't even the worst of 2016. The worst of 2016 was after that, I believe. At CitizenCon. Yeah, CitizenCon was after that. There, this is when, you know, when you want to call them like liars, this is when they lied. Right to our face.
or they were lying to his face and then he lied to us like he's saying because that is that is how like software development works you all get in a room you you discuss the work you decide how long it's going to take um you know you go back and forth they talk about like you know the poker that they talked about recently on a on a you know star citizen live type thing um that's how it's done and they were really bad at poker back then i guess um really really bad at it cuz holy but i don't like that he didn't stand in front of his employees and say yeah i screwed up like completely not possible you know to to stand up in front of them but man that was 2016 in a nutshell i do believe that since 2016 they've tried to do a lot better because i don't know how you cannot look back at some of these moments and go um you know even as them and just be like wow you know that was stupid i shouldn't have said that or whatever right i would love love like if if i had you know the ability to you know have three wishes I would, I would, you know, maybe waste one on forcing some of them, you know, the the main figureheads that stood in front of the camera and literally lied, to sit down and watch themselves and like explain explain yourself here, you know, explain what this was all about. That would be, ah, oh, that would be great, you know. It just um. You know, I think that they're they're a, they're a lot better now. I don't want to say aware, but they're a lot better now. And like you know, looking at even you know, the original Robert's letter from la the from earlier last year, there was an attempt to be more reasonable with the the expectations, even more so in in the more recent one. But all still just should be taken completely with a grain of salt because everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is bullshit. You know? Really, Ditch were still complete fantasy? No, they weren't. Uh, because it was PES, this is what we're hoping for, um, but we don't know what's going to happen. Right, they they set the expectation in the original Roberts letter too that we don't know what's going to happen. We looked at everything else, you know, th this then three nineteen, then four point oh. This is when it was supposed to be, right? Like this is what it was supposed to be. Yes, that's what they planned for. They always say what they're planning for, and then we take it as that's super concrete. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's going to be, and it never is. Um, but. You know, I don't call those lies. What I saw on the screen today are were blatant lies. They, they have to be. How could they not be? How could they how could it be this bad? Right? So yeah, that's a tough one, man. Wow. 2016 was the worst year in Star Citizens history because it's where we were hyped up the most and let down the most. Think it's bad now? Back then was the absolute worst.